first you know, 15, 20 minutes, we're going to talk about the markets and the news. The next 20 minutes, we're going to talk about the topic of the day, which is meme coins. And then the second half, of the last bit of the show, we will talk to the sponsor of the show, which is a meme coin itself. So definitely have a lot to talk about today. Do want to do a very brief overview of the market before we uh, get into that. So, you know, we have Bitcoin fighting for its life at the moment, just above 40,000 at 40,100. Uh, just really fast. I mean, obviously, big support resistance level and psychological level at you know, right around 40,000. But uh, Bitcoin has also been itself in a local downtrend for the past little bit. And where it is at the moment is actually very interesting because either it is going to, you know, continue up and break out of support resistance and break out of the downtrend, or it is going to get shut down here. It's probably sometime today if it gets shut down. Um, and, you know, continue in the local downtrend. So definitely it is worth keeping an eye on, obviously, after, you know, we've had an initial, you know, push down like this. It is normal for things to pop back up, you know, five, six, seven percent, what have you. But at the same time, like you have to consider the, like, the, the lines of the local downtrend as well. So, you know, when you see uh, a lot of projects that have kind of popped back, like, you know, six, five percent on the day. Uh, some people kind of want to be like, okay, the worst is over, we'll continue on. But then at the same time, you have to realize that we're still in a local downtrend and until they officially have broken out, uh, it's just worth, worth keeping an eye on. So moving forward, we got Ethereum around 2200, Solana still under 90 at 87, XRP at 51 cents. It's been very, very boring holding XRP the past few months here. Uh, Cardano under 50 cents at 47, Polkadot at 643, Chainlink at 14. 1414 uh, definitely that is one i've been looking to accumulate more of uh with the narrative cross-chain interoperability protocol narrative has been very strong for chain link and i feel like that is probably going to be one of the ones i'm going to try to isolate and get more of as we continue on i do want to take a quick look at the gainers and the losers here especially for you traders out there uh, always a good idea to look at the top gainers and the top losers because whatever direction is going, those are the coins with the most volume, uh, you know, in that with the most price action. You know, when you're a trader, you need that volatility, right? So uh, we have Monta Network in the top 100 now, up 32%. We have uh, Bitensor TAO up 18, Helium up 15, Sui up 11, and a handful of coins up between, you know, 10 to 7%. Uh, you know, from like normal when things get you know shut down 30%, it is normal for things to wake back up. But uh, just because, you know, ICP is up 8% doesn't mean that I think it's out of its downtrend. Uh, I think that there's probably a little bit more downward pressure to come in the overall crypto markets, mainly uh, with the dollar is waking up just a little bit. There's that uh, when the dollar gains more, gets more powerful, the markets tend to uh, strong dollar, weak market and vice versa, right? And, you know, Bitcoin's also playing out like a three-day and five-day bearish divergence on the chart there. So I do want to just kind of have a conversation about like the overall directions of the market for the first little bit here, and then we will move on to talking about meme coins. I, I definitely also later in the show want to talk about this Trump meme coin. This thing has no chill whatsoever. But first off, I'm going to pass it to Raf here. Raf, man, first of all, how are you doing today? What's going on? And what are your thoughts on like just the, the overall of the market right now? Like, you know, with Bitcoin fighting around 40,000, like, do you think that uh, there's more blood in the streets to come or is the worst behind us? Uh, I think, what's up, man? Thanks for, uh, for having me up here. I think we're going to see a, a small downtrend here. Um, and as the months go by, um, I think leading into the end of the year, uh, you're going to see things get much more bullish, right? Because you, you need to have that healthy dip in order for uh, this, this bull run to kick off. So I'm pretty bullish on the market right now. I'm holding uh, a lot of ETH personally and some Bitcoin. Um, and, you know, there's a few meme coins as well, because I think, you know, this market in general, I think this bull run, what's going to happen is a lot of these, uh, these meme coins in general, I think they're going to do very, very well. Um, cause you know, every, every bull run, there's always like this meta, right? Last year it was NFTs a year but before that, you know, there was a few meme, meme coins that did really well. Uh, but I think this year is going to be like the bull run for meme coins, man. And I'm, I'm fucking super pumped up. Um, just cause I've been trading them myself, you know, made pretty good, pretty good gains on it. Uh, the last year, 
so yeah, I'm excited for this year, man. This this is going to be a big year for crypto. You know, obviously the with the ETF getting approved, um, that just opens up a lot of doors for us, man. So I'm definitely pumped and I'm excited. Sure. Just uh, to elaborate, which meme coins have you been targeting? I'm curious. Uh, I've been in, in a few of the bigger ones, right? So like I, I was early investor in a Grok. Uh, I was telling uh, Goody the story about Smurf Cat, how I fumbled the bag on that, man. I, got, I actually got into it um, pretty early, like right around like 16K market cap. And originally, for those that, that, that held Smurf Cat, right? There was a, a fake Smurf Cat that had dropped before it. And I ended up buying the original one and I, I kind of rode it to like one mil. Man, I wish I would have kept the moon bag, dude, because like uh, about 24 hours later after I sold, that shit was already at like 12 mil. And then shortly after that, it was at like 24 mil. Like I was sick, bro. <laughs> Well, Goody, Goody actually has a story about uh, a bag that he he recently fumbled, and he didn't. He doesn't want to talk about it, but I I think he should because I think I think there's a lesson there. Goody, do you care to elaborate on on your story there? That, I mean, Jesus, you're gonna just put me on the spot like that. that it's just this Trump thing that you the, the Trump token you you mentioned is like I I was in that early like a lot of people and and you know sold for like very small gains and what I sold then for like very small would be you know forty fifty ETH right now and it's just the the world of of meme coins it's the only place that like. Twenty dollars can really turn into twenty k, and and it really is the truth. And just from like August till now, um, it, it's kind of a, a wild. You know, the the rest of it's funny because crypto as a whole is seen as like the casino, and then the stable coin or the you know the mainstay coins of Bitcoin, ETH, etc. See meme coins as the casino. And it's like we each we just get into smaller and smaller casino uh, sectors, I guess, you know, but but it is what it, it is what it is. Don't 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 call me out for, for those laws. <laughs> Come on, man. Well, you know, I did want to stick to the news, you know, and uh, a big part of the news today is a story that I see over and over and over is about the Trump meme coin. And the Trump meme coin has certainly like, you know, with the. A speculative bet on his presidential campaign, right? Um, I don't really want to get into politics, but I want to talk about the coin itself and its and its progression over the past little while. I mean, if you bought this thing on January first on New Year's Eve, you would still be up, you know, three hundred. I mean, excuse me, six hundred and thirty nine percent. That that is pretty significant. Not to mention, if you you know bought on way earlier than that, I mean, you could be up a few thousand percent, which is just insane. I think the I've, the the news story I find very funny today is that, you know, they gave, uh, they dropped him some of the Trump coin, like, you know, in that wallet from like his team. And I think they sent him like, you know, something in the ballpark of like $7,100 or something like that. And now that bag that they sent him is worth over a million, a million dollars. Uh, I, I find that story very funny. Um, so I do want to pass it, you know, maybe to, to Adam Miller here, Adam Miller, what are your thoughts like on the progression of the Trump coin? And do you think like, uh, you know, should people still jump on the the train here, or is it is it time to run away? Oh, the person I asked who just left the space. I'll go to Alex Finn with this question. Alex Finn, how you doing today? First of all, good to have you on. And secondly, what are your thoughts on the Trump coin, man? I'm doing well, dude. Good to be here. What are my thoughts on the Trump coin? Uh, well, as long as Trump's in the race, it's going to do well. So I am, uh, I'm not holding any Trump coin and never plan on buying any Trump coin. It seems like a flash in the pan type thing, but, uh, I don't know. He seems like the type of guy that gets attention. So I'm sure the coin will get more attention. Sure. No, for sure. I just find it, I mean, I do like to see, I mean, I don't want to like spend, you know, 15 minutes, 13, whatever, talking about the Trump coin, but I, you know, it is in the news of the day and it, uh, you know, it is just an example of what a meme coin can do like with any sort of hype behind it you're just rubbing it in with to me i I get it 
I get it. You just want to rub it in. Well, I, it's it's okay. Well, you know, if you if you fumbled, you fumbled. You know, either in Madden or on Trump Coin, a, a fumble's a fumble. It's okay. I, I and I, I didn't even want to bring that back up. I, when I really you target with the hit stick like you do, it is it's just it's not fair when you're that much better. No, we're not going to get into this right now. Keep on the news of the day. I'm trying to talk about the news. You you are the one that came back. But you know, I I do. I mean, there's a, so much going on in the markets right now. And I think a lot of it is, you know, with the ETFs, right? And I mean, to be honest, it is kind of funny in retrospect that if you sold on Christmas, if you sold a month ago today, that, you know, you would be winning. But at the same time, I feel like there, uh, the conviction this time around has been very strong from people. I, I did a tweet the other day that was like, if someone told you, if one of the, your trusted sources in crypto told you that like you should sell on Christmas, would you have sold? And it's funny because, you know, most of the people in the comments just said, no, 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 no. And I feel like even if like we can use technical analysis or whatever to determine like, you know, we're about to have like a 30, 20 percent dip. I feel like most people would just like ignore it anyway. Uh, and because like everyone's really, really has high, high, high conviction on the long term and like what's to come in the next year or so. And they don't want to get like caught in the in jumping in and the out game. So. I mean, certainly I feel like uh, the immediate, so when the, if you really like play the tape out on like, you know, what happened with the Bitcoin ETFs, it's like the, the, um, the sell the news kind of idea did sort of play out in the long term, even if that's not the overall, you know, pulse in the short term. So uh, I guess I'll pass it to Justin. He is a part of Europe, Europe's. Oh, uh, sorry, it went away. Europe's oldest cryptocurrency fund must have a, 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 a beat on this. Justin, how are you doing today? And what are your thoughts on, you know, just the recent price action with Bitcoin? And, like, do you think that the ETF narrative is going to play out in the long run? Um, can, can, can you all hear me okay? It's a little... Yes. It sounds like you're in a wind tunnel, but it's not that bad. Uh, that's unfortunate. It's not going over the right mic, but uh, this will be fine for now. I'll change it later. So there's there's a bit to unpack here. Um, since, as you know, I take a um, very different approach to cryptocurrency investment. So I just want to touch on the meme coin thing a little bit here. Or maybe should I touch on that later instead? Whatever you want. All right, all right I'm going to touch on this. Uh, so as you know, I take a very different approach to cryptocurrency investment. And I would never invest in a meme coin myself because of that um and you know no no disrespect intended here because i think there's a there's a big difference between say doing momentum trading and doing technical analysis to doing the type of fundamental analysis that i do they're very different approaches and it's not invalid taking that approach i i just think that if you're not an extremely sophisticated momentum or sentiment trader when it comes to meme coins then it is i think for a lot of people that's just a casino that's that that's gambling, right? So if you're taking a very sophisticated approach, you know, sure, I can understand where that's coming from. But as an investor that purely focuses on fundamentals, um, I, I really, uh, there aren't really any good fundamentals in a meme coin. I mean, that's part of the definition of a meme coin is that all it has going for it is that virality and that kind of, um, you know, mimetic virus, right? That, that, that's part of the strength of, of such a system. So, so for me, it's a very different approach. So I think, I think in terms of what I can add is maybe just a bit of that pushback. And I know I'm here on the DGN show and, and maybe a fundamental analysis approach isn't as, as de degenerate, let's say. Um, uh, I really do think we can uh, turn this around. In, in regard to the um, uh, ETF, as you mentioned, um, I, I personally find it pretty uninteresting. I mean, it is on some levels kind of antithetical to, to what we're all really about. I'm not against it, and I think it's good for the space as a whole, but just from a fundamental level, it doesn't improve Bitcoin, let's say, which is also a meme coin if you think about it. Can you, like pass it on. can you elaborate yeah. on that? Like, why do you think it doesn't improve Bitcoin if it opens the doors for more institutional players to get positions? It opens up accessibility. Right. 
Right, so it opens up accessibility to institutional players that would otherwise not be able to, and that's, I think that's good. That's just good for cryptocurrency, that's good for the vision, but it doesn't actually improve Bitcoin itself, right? It doesn't make Bitcoin scalable, it doesn't make its, gov its governance more functional, it's, it, it doesn't do anything for Bitcoin itself. So I'm more interested in, in the technology and the fundamentals, obviously, and I think, you know, the ETF can be seen as a win for everyone, you know, as a rising tide lifts all boats. That's fair. So, I mean, so what are so what are you looking for then? Like in terms of, uh, like obviously you're holding Bitcoin, and you're bullish on it. But so if if the ETF doesn't like get you excited, or not saying not to get not that it doesn't get you excited, but what what would you be looking for from the fundamentals for more upside? So. I mean, for, for me, what I'm looking for is I'm, I'm really looking long term. So I really think what's interesting for me are scalable layer ones uh, that can offer a lot of utility. I don't, I don't invest in Bitcoin, actually. The fund I manage has not been invested in BTC since 2017, ever since the block size debates really made it clear that it wouldn't scale. So for me, I'm interested in investing in utility. I'm a value investor, right? So I'm, I'm looking for real value. So where is the real value at, I think, is really what I'm asking. Like, who, who, which, which blockchain is able to develop the most revenues over the long term? See, meme coins are just a kind of speculative game where people are trying to, you know, up each other. And, but it's kind of a, you know, that's, 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 that's not sustainable. That's, that's not the big vision. That's not what, you know, I signed up for in 2013 when, uh, as an idealistic libertarian. Right. I mean, where we can make a real change is replacing the current financial system and replacing, um, you know, a, a, a lot of the, the political and governance systems in our world. We can really change the world with this stuff. And that's also very valuable. It's how I can combine my passion in, in research and fundamentals and also put that into investment. And meme coins, since this is the topic of the show, are fundamentally just antithetical to that idea. I mean, Dogecoin right, was founded as a joke. It's satire. It's making fun of all of us, saying, ha ha, look, you'll even buy this joke thing. And, and it blew up. I mean, I still think it's hilarious, but it's, but it's also satirical, right? It's, it's, we, can, we can maybe reflect a bit and, and make fun of ourselves here, how silly that is. And, and yeah, no I mean, disrespect I, I to, to the sophisticated traders out there that, that play on that, right? That's, that's something else. No, and I, I see your point for sure. I mean, like, Obviously, crypto, like you're saying, like you, you wanted to see it replace the legacy system. You want to see like a, a true fundamental seismic shift in, you know, the way people, you know, exchange value, essentially. But, you know, at, at the same time, like I understand, like I wear uh, the sentiment you have on meme coins. A lot of people feel that way about meme coins, to be to be fair. But on the other edge of that coin, you know, if you there are a lot of DGen people out there. I mean, this is the DGen show that make millions and millions of dollars. You play because they pay attention to meme coins, and and like I feel like a lot of people with crypto. Crypto is more of a personal, a person. It's it's how it's how you know beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? It has less to do. I feel like a lot of people feel like you know a lot of day traders out there. I don't think that they think that they can make an impact on how the world exchanges value. They don't, you know, most people won't be able to uh, make a, a massive shift in terms of how people interpret, you know, value in general. But at the same time, if you pay attention to the alpha groups and if you pay attention, you have your finger on the pulse, you can, I mean, there are, you can make millions and millions of dollars in meme coins. Sure, so would sure. You you, yeah, you, you know, can. You know, yeah, you can, but it's also the important to keep in mind that for every millionaire that made his millions making meme coins, right, there's probably a thousand people that lost money, right? That's very important to understand. I know it's a very that, but, but asymmetric game. I know, but that's trading, man. Like, when you, right, I mean, that's you trading. To... Yeah, and I, and, and I agree with you. That's where I agree with you. This is trading, and usually I wouldn't recommend normal people to start trading unless you're sophisticated in technical analysis and, you know, you, you understand some quantitative analysis. Then you're, you know, a sophisticated actor, and you can really specialize in this. But when, like, every day gotta... retail people buy a meme coin, yeah, that's, that's gambling, right? And on top of that, you got to compete with the rug pulls, right? So many people make these meme coins and rug pull the whole thing. So not only are you competing with 
not only do you have a one percent chance of winning in meme coin just because of the the just how that works, then on top of that you got the people who build the coin and rug pull it. It's just it's a losing game. Hey Raph, yeah. Raph, I think wait, hold on, Justin, I, I will get back to you, but Raph, I I, I do want to hear a pro meme coin take here. I, I know that that you that you are you're a, you're someone that really gets involved with these things. So like, what, what's your take on this? No, he's he he makes valid points, right? Like I'm not I'm not here to sure, argue sure. with him. Um, but you have to have an understanding that whenever you're trading into a meme coin, right? It's not funds that you know. I, I'm not going to lose sleep over, right? Like I'm. It's not like I'm tossing twenty, thirty ETH into something. Um, it's something that you know. It's a lot of these meme coins are either community driven or they have you know a very solid dev. Like I don't just ape into anything, right? Like I. I actually do my research. Um, I'm very well connected, like in this realm. So, like a lot of the the, the developers in the space, you know, we, we kind of have a good relationship, like guys you can trust. Because if if you go in blind, right, just trying to catch your next one thousand x or hundred x, five hundred x, or whatever it may be, um, that's how you get wrecked, man. Right. So whenever I recommend you know a project to someone, it's because hey, this I I give information like hey. I know this dev, this is, these are his previous projects. These are things that, you know what I'm saying? This, he, he pushes things, right? Um, and he does things the right way. What does doing the right, right? What, what does doing things the right way mean, right? You know, LP's locked or burned, right? Contract is renounced. You know, team doesn't hold, you know, a million tokens, right? Um, it's, it, these, these are small fundamental things that you look into a coin before you invest that you know you, you really have to do your research on and you know it it, it is it is, is it, at the end of the day you know if we're, if we're really realistic it's it, it it really is gambling right but there are those coins out there that you'll see go to 100 200 300 million market cap right but it's because of the one the the, the individuals behind that token and the community behind that token right because dude this meme coin space is very degen, right? If you get a bunch of good degens together in, you know, in one room and we're in one token together, man, they, they can do, the, the possibilities are endless, right? So, you know, and, and I understand the point and, and meme coins aren't for everyone, right? I, I, I'm not saying that, you know, um, everyone has like their little, you know, little, their little niche in the space. Um, man, I, I love it. I just love communities. Um, I love meeting new people, you know, and, and just learning in general about, about some of these things. Love it, man. Charles, you got your hand up. I, I, I think I know what side of the fence you're on here, but send it. Yeah, so, no, so actually, it's funny, AJ. Um, I'm actually on both sides. You know, I, I um, my history is coming from, um, you know, I started in 2015. I'm a macro market um, crypto investor. I'm a big advocate. Um, in like blockchain infrastructure, um, big time, long term investor in, you know, chain link, Bitcoin, Ethereum, like lots of the top, you know, 100 tokens that are actually, you know, building the decentralized financial infrastructure for the future ahead. And like, that's where, you know, most of my, um, you know, investments lie from a percentage standpoint. But, you know, I, I made a mistake, you know, I, I um, in 2021, I kind of had a similar mindset, um, you know. As, as Justin was kind of describing it as terms of like, you know, I wouldn't necessarily be an advocate of meme coins and whatever. And I, I realized that I just, I left a lot on the table. Um, and I, you know, so since then I've opened my mind, you know, and I've gotten into meme coins um, over the, since 2021, but really like, um, you know, really uh, heavily since like the last maybe six or eight months. And what I can, what I can tell you about meme coins, similar to NFTs, is that if you're if you're an advocate of mass adoption, things like meme coins and NFTs, you know, have a much wider appeal. So like there are billions of people in the world that may not be interested in finance or investing at all, but they would be interested in NFTs or or meme coins because it's something that touches their heart. It's something that, you know, they, they can relate to. Um, those are things that go viral, like way more so than the small, you know, financial world. So, you know, like in terms of if, if you're an advocate of mass adoption, you know, you kind of have to be on the side of like, you know, of NFTs and meme coins, in my opinion, 
Otherwise, you're just you're closing your world up um, to a really small, you know, through a really small, you know, vision. And and so, like, yeah, do I do I still think that, you know, for the long term, it's it's wiser to put a majority of my assets into things like, you know, Chainlink and Bitcoin, Ethereum? Of course, um, you know, I think it would be crazy not to do that. But to think that meme coins don't stand, you know, a really important purpose in, in DeFi and in crypto to me would be like a very small closed mindset because, um, you know, there's just way too many people that may not be interested, you know, in investing in, you know, in whatever, investing in general, in any market, but they would be onboarded through something like a meme coin or through an NFT. So that's kind of my take. And like, so I've, you know, I think also, you know, one last point is that like, you know, we just had um, an approval for a Bitcoin ETF on NASDAQ, as was mentioned. I think you're going to see a whole nother, you know, world of financial products offered, you know, through like, you know, um, top 100 ETFs. Um, I think you'll probably see like AI ETFs, like AI token ETFs. I think you're going to see a meme coin ETF. Like, I think all of those products are just a matter of time and, and Bitcoin just opened the door. Um, but I think they're here to stay for, for the, you know, inevitably forever. And I think we're going to see, you know, new segments of the market that open up as well. And that's just kind of my take. So like, you know, for me, I love it and it makes it fun. Um, you know, obviously I, I enjoy the other side of things as well, but like, this is like, I've never had more fun besides being in a community that all has a similar mindset that all has, you know, like like-minded individuals that can just go out and let loose and make money together, you know? So like, that's kind of the difference between meme coins and like really util utility driven products that are building, you know, DeFi and blockchain infrastructure for the future. Yeah. I mean, Charles, you made a lot of really good points there. And like, I, I agree that, you know, certainly meme coins like open the door to pe for pe people to get inside the house of crypto. Right. I, I mean, I've like time and time again, when things get really hype, like back in 2021, when like my little sisters or kids I went to high school with, when they would ask me about crypto, they weren't asking me about Ethereum or Chainlink. They were asking me about Dogecoin and Shiba. And I feel like that they definitely serve their purpose to get people in the door. And I, and I do understand that some people, you know, don't know how to play it there, you know, in, in every trade, there is a winner and a loser. And that's a part of the game that that is trading, uh, that there's no ethic. I don't have any ethical qualms with that. But I, I also it's dangerous to say, you know, that 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 trading in any form really is gambling, because if you if you look at like gambling examples, for instance, poker, poker is gambling. But, you know, in in professional poker, luck does not explain why you see so many um, faces at final tables. So it's if, like there, if, there is this line between the people who are gambling and the people that, you know, that do the homework, have the technical analysis, fundamental analysis like RAF, uh, like the way you vet your projects. You don't just throw your money at anything. And Justin, I do want to circle back to you, but I got I got my guy Ryan just throwing up hundreds all day down there. And I, I really want to hear Ryan's take on this. And then uh, I also get to the hand in the air as well. Ryan, how you What's doing? What's going bro? on, AJ? Yeah, thank you for having me uh, in, in the team up here. Uh, no, I mean, I. I agree with both sides. Uh, it, it takes a, a, a special investor to, to uh, throw their money at a meme coin and just kind of hope that the price goes up on other people, you know, buying in. And, uh, you know, I also agree with Justin, you know, you, you want something that's actually going to be building something and, uh, you know, scaling it to a point where, like, it's going to go up on pure, like, fundamentals. Uh, but, uh, you know, the aspect of the meme world is that, you know, you're – you're somewhat building a a community and a network that uh, you know is going to help you expand not only your knowledge but you know expand your ability to to uh, you know get more out of you know this crypto industry. Um, but you know that's uh, I've been a part of a couple of meme projects that uh, I've made you know decent amount of money in, and uh, you know if I wasn't a part of those projects. I wouldn't have made that money. So, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's, it is a, a risky business, but I mean, anything's kind of risky, you know, Bitcoin was, was risky at, at a point. So, um, that's really where I'm at. Um, yeah, maybe we'll let Justin circle back to Justin. Yep. Sure. Scared money. Don't make money. That's, that's right. right. What's up, that's Justin? right. Yeah. If I may just respond. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. And actually I, I actually have to agree with you here. 
right? I mean, like when it comes to adoption and like, I mean, the, I have the same viewpoint of the NFT space, so I'm at least consistent there. Uh, I, think, I think it's undeniable that it brings in a lot of adoption. And, you know, even if I see it as gambling, then, you know, gambling and casinos and crypto are pretty popular. I think I think those two views can actually be fairly consistent with each other. It doesn't mean that that I need to per se, participate as a fundamental investor and there's nothing invalid doing it as a sophisticated trader. And to that regard, I think it'd be good just to um, go back to the point I think you made, Rav. Uh, the, there's a fine line between investment and gambling and trading, right? Um, and I think the difference is very much the level of sophistication and how much time and effort and resources you put into that those decisions right and between if you know what you're doing or if you're just throwing darts at a board you know there there is an important difference there that i think it's important to um to acknowledge but obviously i i, I cannot deny you know the good that comes from you know the the nft and the um the adoption that also comes from meme coins right i think that's that's undeniable and i would be sticking my head in the sand if i if I deny that, and and I understand, you know, the the positive sense of community you can find there as well, and maybe for me that's more in a um, Ethereum core dev uh, forum than it is in a meme coin. But you know, to to each their own. Well put, well put. We got my guy DB Crypto with his hand up. DB, how you doing today, bro? Hey, what's up? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me up. I first off, I love this chat, and not because I love uh, meme coins. But just uh, we have Justin Bonds up here talking about meme coins, which one I never, ever thought we'd ever have it happen. But I, I kind of fall in the middle with all these guys. Uh, I don't touch them personally, but I see their their place. They, they're community builders. They do bring people in and they, they have their their space uh, in crypto. Now, uh, Charles said he thinks we'll see an ETF for meme coins. That would blow my mind if that actually happens. I, I, I don't see that happening, but that would be pretty wild. Uh, my thing with them, though, and why I avoid them is it's a lot of it is kind of inner circle crap. And I was trying to actually find a post from Zach XBT that he did sometime in the past year talking about how he was able to link one address to over 100 different meme coin, basically rugs, where a group of people or just a couple people made millions and tens of millions of dollars just launching meme coins over and over and rugging the community. And that's how I look at meme coins. They're, they are definitely gambling. They're like going to a casino, tossing some money into a slot machine. And it's the worst odds you'll ever have in the casino, but you can't hit it big. You can't deny there's people that make millions, but you also don't see the, the thousands of others that lose 10, 50, hundred bucks or whatever they put in. So it, it has a space. I avoid it, though. That's just uh, kind of where I'm at. I, I, I mean, I, a lot of people see it that way. And I do want to continue this conversation. I want to pass it to I am SO Chris. But before I do that, I just want to do some quick housekeeping really fast. First of all, there's over 2,400 people in the space right now. Thank you all for being here. We all really appreciate it. Make sure you give some, some love to all the speakers here up on stage. Give them a follow. And we will also be transitioning to talking about the sponsor here in less than 10 minutes. And also, I do want to point your attention to the pin tweet. There are two pin tweets. One of them is for the sponsor. And the second one is for the newsletter and the telegram that we have uh, here at, at the round table. Make sure you sign up for the Telegram, get involved with the newsletter, a bunch of really good alpha there. Make sure you stay plugged in. And if you're liking this conversation, uh, definitely let us know in the comments what your thoughts are, if there's any meme coins you like, or meme coins you don't like, or what your opinion is. Let us know. We want to we want to hear you in the comments. So big shout out to everybody here. We really appreciate you. All right, I do want to continue the conversation. Let's go to, to Chris. Chris, man, how are you doing today? What are your thoughts? Uh, well, you know, I was trying to keep it on the same track you were going, but we got a little off track there. So here's the thing. Technical analysis doesn't work on meme coins that have very little existence, right? And so your concept of sentimental analysis, knowing a little bit about the dev, the LP, all of that is definitely fine. But I'm, I'm in this situation where I think people need to understand these things are set up to fail from the beginning, right? Anytime you put the entire token supply with a very limited LP, 
you lock all of that. You airdrop and distribute a bunch of tokens to a bunch of randoms or through a pre-sale format. You, you basically tie your hands behind your back. You put everything out there. You have very little liquidity. You lock everything down. And a handful of MFers got early entry. Barely any liquidity whatsoever sends the token up in value, which moves up its place in deck score, deck screener, bird's eye, or whatever it might be that you're using. Uh, that causes you to, in some instances, buy or maybe bots react. And so, like, the reason people lose in meme coins isn't because it's not a fun gamble or a good gamble. You lose in meme coins because it's literally set up uh, in a non-sustainable way from the launch because that's what gives that speculation and that hype. You know, people want to compare Dogecoin as an example. That is not an example. Dogecoin was built, yes, kind of as a meme by a gentleman, but it still had the mathematics of something like Bitcoin, right? So when you're buying a shit coin or a meme coin and you're asking yourself, can this do what Doge did? Or can this do what, you know, very rare instances where you find a Bonk Inu or where you find a Pepe, right? Or a Sheeb. And I think Sheeb was circumstantial just based on timing. You know what I mean? And then the Coinbase listing. So recreating Sheeb is going to be a challenge as well. But you do have Doge. You you have seen Bonk on Solana do some pretty incredible shit. And we did see Pepe do some incredible shit, but then some of the LP got pulled, right? Which is almost like contradictory to what we're saying here, that it's nice to see that a token has its LP burned. We'll use Pepe as an example for that. But like, if you're going to get in on this, I have to agree with most of what I'm hearing here. If you're going to get it on meme coins, then look at it exactly as a gamble. Don't look at it as the next potential bonk or the next potential doge, because those are very few and far between. But what you can guarantee is that if you are early on a meme token, there is a very low amount of liquidity inside of that pool usually. Well, if there's a low amount of liquidity inside of that pool, it means a very small amount of money is going to move that price higher and add liquidity to that pool. So the first thing you should always do is look at how much liquidity is in the pool. If there's $25,000 in the pool and you want to invest $1,000 in this meme coin, well, then you have to start asking yourself, how much can I actually take out? If price goes up and this thing goes to $50,000, if it goes up 5x and there's $50,000 in liquidity and I put in 1000 well, then me selling my $1,000 worth at $5,000 is 10% of the liquidity pool. Only a handful of people can do that before this thing goes to zero. So I think people just don't understand that meme coins are literally set up to fail from the beginning. And there is nothing about the tokenomics or the way you, de you know, design the liquidity pool that is, that is set for sustainability. So when you get in, you can never sit there and become emotionally attached. Like it's one thing to become emotionally attached to a Solana or heaven forbid a fucking Cardano, right? Like, but I could still understand you becoming emotionally attached to XRP. But what we're seeing is we're seeing people become emotionally attached to these meme coins, and we're seeing, like, you know, used car promo here and there, and dog with hat promo here and there, and every founder of every blockchain's dog has a fucking token. It's like, yeah, guys, but how many of those can actually transcend and, and hit the traditional Web2 world. Like, how many people outside of crypto give a fuck that Raj's dog's name is Miro? Like, no one gives a fuck. But what they do care about is Dogecoin. And this is just this weird thing where the majority of people who know about Dogecoin and own Dogecoin aren't even Web3 users and probably spend zero time on Twitter. Matter of fact, they likely bought their Doge on Robinhood, right? I think you have... I think you're making some 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 strong points. I, I feel like you know there are are so many examples of things you know when when you your thesis that you know meme coins are set up to fail. But at the same time, in the same breath, I don't feel like people. It kind of really goes into the intent 
on the project itself and like the intent of what the project is trying to do because there you know there are coins out there that are considered air quote meme coins that that actually ha like have some utility or do something other than some dog or whatever like there are yeah, right like a bonk or a pepe and some of these right, others but, but i agree with you that, that it's uh, it's also it's it's i wouldn't say just because a small amount of projects are successful i don't think that that should mean other projects shouldn't try like you know i you know like the only a very small percentage of kids in high school playing football will make the nfl but that doesn't mean they're not going to try to make the nfl even if they're not going to make it there you know you see my point it's like i still feel yeah, but like you're that, not going to that, stop that, projects right aj because that's going to happen projects are going to be looking for liquidity and trying everything they can i mean fuck our ecosystem has a token right it's a, but it's a utility token it's not a mean token but it's like yeah, of course, projects are going to still try to do it. I'm not talking to the projects. I'm talking yeah, I'm to the listeners. I'm just saying the intent, like, like you know, some, not every project has bad intent. And like, I I see what you're saying. How some projects, maybe more than more than I'd like to admit, are set up to fail. But I don't feel like that's the case across the board because there are there you know because all, it does come down. Like, I'm not talking to the projects, but it does come down to the intent of the project is what I'm make the point I'm making. We got my guy. But AJ, is it a up. meme? It, can I just ask you, AJ, is it a meme coin? If there is actual utility and community and, you know, dev, right? Like, yes. is it, is it really a meme? If you have a face behind it and there's utility and there's a roadmap, I don't, that's more I of a shit point, coin. I, I see your point. But my point is, is that uh, to the, to the broader market, even projects with utility, with, a team and other that they they will still be interpreted as a meme project to the market until they get to a certain point. Uh, I got my guy Raph with his hand up. Raph, how are you doing? What's up? No, no, I'm I'm actually you know re really excited that some of these points were made, right? Because these are these are key things you know you you, you kind of have you discuss within yourself sometimes when you're investing into something, right? Especially more specifically a meme coin. Um, so a little background on me, like one of the things I've done over the last year was I've been helping, you know, tokens. Uh, I, I can, I'm the connections guy, right? Like I, you, a dev comes to me, hey, I have a token that I want to drop. Can you, you know, can you get, get me some influencers, some, some callers or, or you know, I, I want to build my community, right? So after seeing this <laughs> for some time, right, one of the things that I wanted to do was I, I've seen what was done right and what was done wrong, right? And I decided to do my own fucking thing, right? And and that's why, uh, so the token that's sponsoring the space right now is, is it's my token, right? Um, and I, 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 you know, from my experiences the, over the last year, year and a half in, in the meme coin realm, um, these are things like that were brought up today that I that I took in consideration when, when, when making my token, right? So when it comes to liquidity, right? Very good point, right? Because a lot of people look at the market cap. They don't look at the liquidity, right? If you have low liquidity in a project, you're going to get yourself fucking wrecked, right? Because at any point, someone who holds 2%, 3% of that token, they can sell at any time and that liquidity is fucking gone, right? So what I did was, you know, I, I made a fat liquidity pool, right? I wanted people to feel safe. When they're buying into my token, I want you to come in knowing that. If I put one ETH into it and it goes down, you know, it I'm gonna ride the chart with it, and you know, it it, it, I'm, it may go down to like 0.8 what I bought, but it's not gonna go to fucking zero, right? Uh, another thing, supply, right? I wanted to make supply. I burned 50 percent of my supply, so as soon as you bought, you know, your tokens already were were more valuable than when you when you purchased them at, right? Another thing that we did was, uh, well, we burned 50 percent of the supply. Um, we wanted to create the name behind the token. We wanted to bring communities together, right? Because a lot of people talk about NFTs and tokens, right? But nobody, there's like this thing where, you know, I come from the NFT community. That's like where, where I really, you know, I'm passionate about. But people in NFTs think tokens are scams, right? And people in tokens think that NFTs are fucking worthless, right? So I kind of wanted to combine that together, right? and bring awareness to both, which is why we chose the ticker, which is why we chose the name that we did, right? And it's fucking working, right? Because we, we, we're we about a, we're a week old, tokens currently sitting at uh, 2.7 mil market cap, liquidity is at 257K uh, liquidity. And 
you know, for a token that's uh, um, um, a week old, that's pretty fucking impressive, right? Um, and I'm and I'm proud of that because I, I did that. We did that all ourselves. So I, my I started this token with with Chris, um, and this this it's going along our plan, right? And like one of the things we want to do is. Yeah, it's a meme coin now, but it's not going to be a meme coin in the next six months, right? Because what we're doing is we're providing utility to our holders, right? So you trusted me enough to invest in me. All right, well, now I'm going to reward you, right? I'm airdropping you something. That 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 NFT, you're going to be able to stake that, and you're going to be able to earn something else, right? So essentially what we did was we're, we're creating a money printer for our holders, right? Um, and not many people do that in this space. So that's why I'm uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and you know, Raph, really fast. I just, I just want ahead. to point out that, that first you did a really good, I was going to get like a, you know, a full intro of, cause this, you know, your project is the sponsor of the space, uh, every, to anyone listening in the speaker section, the project that says, you know, money sign NFT, that is the project. It's, uh, NFT ape pudgy clone X Azuki Milady M effort in you, uh, Holy, holy shit, that's a name. Uh, I actually think it, 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 it's actually like uh, the irony of it is actually like a tribute to a success. I actually find that very funny and ironic. And uh, so like I but I, I still like I, I still you sort of gave like an intro, but I, I, I do just want like to for clarity for the audience and the speakers, uh, like just like a 90 second overview of like you know like why it's like what like what your intent was like why you started it and you're also kind of moving and, you know, some projects start as memes and they could be interpreted as memes, but eventually they kind of grow out of that phase as well. So could you touch on that as well? Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, yeah. Well, the reason why we started it was because of, you know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of, you know, individuals in the space that don't know what the fuck they're doing. Right. A lot of this is is they're just shooting at the hip, hoping it works. Uh, but when you do things the right way, you build the community the right way. And it, it's just simple things, man, that, that people just don't understand. Like you have to be um, a lot of people, you know, they'll, they'll launch a project. Um, and the first, all they worry about is just making money off of that project. Right. So my bit, bi my biggest focus was adding value to what that my investors, people who are, who are buying into my main point, which is why, you know, we, we decided to, to, to flip that to a, like rewarding them with a utility right um just because the community is fucking awesome and and it, it's, it's turned out phenomenal up to this point and and when it i think i don't know if he's listening um justin and db crypto like i know you guys don't invest in meme coins i'm not asking you to buy my token but dm me and i would like to dro airdrop you guys some tokens just so you guys can see like the way meme coins are the way communities are and 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 just when someone does something right, like the potential that it may have, right? Um, I would definitely uh, love to do that for you guys, just so you guys can see. There you go. Uh, does anybody have any questions for Raph about the project? I know Wolf has his hand up. Wolf, do you want to kick it off? Hey, yeah, uh, Gmog, everyone. Thanks for having me up here today. <clears throat> I just thought this space looked really interesting. Uh, I figured I'd come up and just talk for a minute. I know there's probably a lot of requests. So I don't want to waste anyone's time. But, uh, Pretty much. Yeah, I really think meme coins are going to like uh, they're offering uh, like a source of entertainment, you know, because I, I started crypto maybe a little later than a lot of people. But a lot of my friends are technical. And, uh, you know, there was like a lot of use like utility use cases that were big, I feel like when I first started crypto. But now I think these meme coins are a lot more honest because like they're not promising anything. You know what I mean? At least I, I, I hope so, you know, because like, they're fun. They should just be a merit of, hey, is this catching momentum? Are the memes good? As in, like, are they creative? Can they somehow utilize, like, culture and, you know, current events in a way to splice together something that people who have no idea of, even about that they're a shit coin or meme coin or whatever, can find entertaining? And, and that's what I, I'm really excited about these next couple of months because, obviously, you know, we could talk about, uh, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum price or Solana price. But I look at these kind of like uh, these little niche circles on ETH and Solana as really fun and i really think that they're more honest if that makes sense to anybody up here on stage or listening like um because there's no like guarantee there's no promising at least with mog which i'm a community member i'm not a a, a team guy so i don't really want to speak on things that are outside of my wheelhouse but uh there are a lot of really fun people on ethereum who just like to make the joy cat logo you know the pit vipers our utility is the the moguls like the pit vipers Wait, do you have um, any questions for raf about his project 
Oh no, I I came up to just talk. I'm sorry, oh, guys. Okay. Uh, if well, anyone this, else yeah, does, this it, is where it, we no, you're good. Does anybody right. else have any questions for Raf about his project? I I saw Justin put his hand up there for a second. Just jump in, Charles. Anybody? Uh, sure. Um, well, I I just want to say that like all cryptocurrencies are meme coins in one way or another, right? Like the meme is what drives the value for all cryptocurrencies. It's just you know I have a utility focused investment thesis or a value investment thesis that's why you know meme coins by definition don't have that. i think that's what meme coins are and like the moment that a meme coin has real utility it's no longer a quote-unquote meme coin right i mean i mean rev would you agree with that that take yeah i, I would say I, I do i i do in a way if i'm honest right um because it, what it comes down to um, once you, once you start providing things and doing things for the community, right. Um, I think in a way it kind of transitions that, right. And, and yeah. when I say, when I say doing things, I mean like, uh, actual on chain, um, you know, like substance, like, um, like for example, like how we're spawning things out of this token, right. Like that, in my opinion, that that's kind of like a utility, right. So yeah, yeah I, I would, I would agree with that to a point, Justin. Yeah, I mean, like, if, for instance, like, I'm not sure what all of your plans are, but things like if you start implementing DeFi primitives and that starts gaining some adoption, then it doesn't matter if it's called Sushi Swap or whatever weird name it has. I mean, it's a meme, but it's also, like, uh, something with real utility, right, in, in, in that regard. So, um, yeah, I, I think there's an instinct path. And to, to another comment, things are more honest uh, as they were. You know, I'm a, I'm a free market guy. So as long as we're all being honest about about what we're doing here, then um, I think I think that's what matters more. And um, appreciate your offer, uh, by the way, Rav. But uh, no, thank you. I don't accept any airdrops so that no one can accuse me of uh, not being independent. But uh, I, I do appreciate the offer. And uh, yeah, it's um, it's an interesting, brave new world out there. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Hey, Raph, So I, I want to ask, like, you know, what are like, you know, the future plans of your project? Like, you know, like, like, what, like, what do you got in plan for twenty twenty four? And as we move, you know, closer to the having and stuff, do you have any any tricks up your sleeve? What do you got, bro? Of course, bro. So we're gonna um, on Valentine's Day, we're gonna drop our white paper for um, for kind of like our utility that we're dropping for for the holders. Uh, I know we're gonna have an event at NFT Paris. And then I'm putting together an event for uh, NFT LA. So focusing on some of the in real life events, um, just because we have a lot of holders in Europe and in the US. So I wanted, uh, wanted to create a hub for that. And then by then, um, the, our holders will be, will be airdrop something. So it'll, it, it'll kind of go with, you know, with some of the plans that we have. Um, but yeah, so we'll, we'll drop the white paper on the 14th. Shortly after that, you know, everyone will receive their airdrop um, and then staking will go live immediately once they receive their airdrop. So, yeah, man, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, real focus is just going to be on community building um, and just adding value to what we're doing um, in any way possible. So definitely super excited about that. For sure, man. For sure. Uh, I do want to get to some of the hands up, but just keep know that. Uh, if I pick on you, make sure it's a question for RAF in the project. It's not, no longer a part of the general conversation. I want to keep it focused on what he's doing. Uh, the first hand that I saw up was D Medi Medi. <laughs> Can you teach me how to pronounce that before you ask him a question? Uh, thank you so much. It's the Medici, the Medici family from Italy. Yeah? Gotcha. D Medici. Okay. Gotcha. Appreciate that. Founders of finance. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The banking uh, juggernauts. Yeah. So uh, I actually wanted to contribute on the previous topic, but since you're talking about a question, I don't know if maybe I should just let others take it, yeah? All good. All good. Um, so, Chris, do you have a question for Raf? Yeah. Uh, token supply, Raf. I know you said that 50% of it got burned initially, but like based on what you're saying about distribution and liquidity, it actually sounds a lot like it, it sounds like you've done well here. I mean, we followed very similar footsteps just on a different blockchain. So now that you've explained that, it makes me bullish. And I don't, I mean, yeah, your name is definitely meme worthy. Let's all not pretend that your name is not fucking meme worthy, dude, because it definitely is. Nailed but let's it. just say, but let's just say, yes, 
I consider what you're doing a utility token for your community that has the ability to onboard new users, which is why we considered a token. Because if you think about NFTs, it's like, yeah, NFTs are fantastic. We love NFTs. But at the end of the day, do you not see the token as a way to onboard a larger user base inside of your community, offer more utility to more people without inflating the initial, like I guess you could call the NFT the underlying asset, right? So what is your total token supply? And um, as far as circulating supply, is all of it in circulation? Do you guys have any held back for rewards or distribution at a later date? Yeah, good question, man. I appreciate it. Um, so, hey, Raph, you're covering your microphone, bro. Oh, my bad. Uh, yeah, total token supply is a uh, hundred mil. Um, we we burned forty five million of it, and then we have another five mil that we're gonna burn uh, starting next month. Um, so, like with events that we do, we're gonna we're gonna do token burns with it, right? So. Um, yeah, man, I'm. Uh, it's 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 exciting, dude. Um, I, this is my, you know, this is my baby, my first token. Anything, I'm, everything's gonna be based off this. So, definitely super excited about it. Awesome, uh, Chris. Do you have any other questions? Is that is that it? No, but I'm like, how did me and this dude not know each other? You know, when we chose our token supply, we went with seventy five million. And we only put 50% into circulation, and the other 50% is unlocked through token staking and NFT rewards over 12 months. So I'm listening to Raph going, wow, this guy actually did something good on E. Dude, I'm like pretty fucking bullish on this <laughs> NFT token right now. I'm not going to lie. I'm not did even an ETH fan, Did you just dude. get flipped live on stage? Live on stage. I build Solana and Bitcoin products, right? Like we don't build much on ETH right now just because we started on Soul and obviously Ordinals and Bitmaps gave us a lot of opportunity because we build games. We don't build like uh, we don't build like DeFi or web utilities. We actually build game utility, right? But when I'm sitting here listening to this guy, I'm going, holy fuck, this is a founder on ETH who actually has taken the market very seriously. He's hit all the bullet points. He's being conservative for his community. He's being responsible with the liquidity pool. Like... Those are all fantastic, and, and I need the audience to understand that this is what I look for when I you know, start looking into quote-unquote meme coins. I say, let me find one that has the potential to become, and this is going to sound crazy to everyone, a shit coin. Let me buy a meme coin that has the potential to become a shit coin because shit coins are superior to meme coins, right? Like by all accounts and purposes. So, Raph, thank you for the information, brother. I'm pretty bullish on you, dude. There we go. Live on stage. Love love to see it. Uh, we're going to get to the last hand. Spike, if you have a question for Raph, go ahead. I do. Uh, GM, everyone. Hey, AJ, thank you for bringing me up. Raph, long time no see, brother. My question is, you know, outside of long-term success what is your long-term vision what is the vision here because i think that's super important because i know you're going to release the the roadmap here in the next couple weeks or so but every great founder has a vision and i want to know what your vision is honestly man i i would love to meet holders in real life and just tell me how i've helped them right like that's one of the things that i kind of like since i've been in this space is things that I enjoy doing because this is a hobby for me, right? I have, I have a career. I do things in in real life. Um, I, my goal is to just meet people um, in person and you know, let, bring them value, right? Bring them value that can change their life. So that that's really what what I'm really bullish about, and that's why we're doing a lot of these in real life uh, experiences uh, with it. Um, but my goal with, with the NFT and, and the uh, and the token is I, I want this to be traded by everyone. I, I want people to come in here and, and you know feel safe that this is a safe uh, investment for them to put their ETH in and not have to worry about you know waking up. Like we have a lot of holders from around the world, right? So I like the fact that when people wake up, you know they know that their investment hasn't gone to zero, right? Like that's that's like my biggest thing with it. Appreciate the question, brother.
Awesome. Awesome. And Raph, I got one more question for you before we wrap. I mean, I mean, I know this it's early, it's early in its career. We're just getting going here, but what are your plans like for marketing? Like how, what, it, how do you, do you intend to get this out to a larger audience? I'm always curious to hear the approach on that. Yeah, we, we actually, um, very good question. I appreciate it. We actually brought on, um, uh, two advisors. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with, um, JNR and brothers marketing. Uh, we brought them on, uh, over the last week. And one of the things we're going to start kicking off here in, in the next week is going to be things in, uh, I guess you could say, in real life, right? Some ad, target ads. Some, um, we're looking to do a billboard in Vegas um, and just, just different venues just to get, you know, more eyes on what we're doing, essentially. Um, and definitely be doing some YouTube uh, stuff. So I'll, I'll be sliding those DMs here shortly, AJ. <laughs> LOL. Let me know, bro. Always open to having a conversation. With that being said, everybody, thanks for being attending to the round table today. Make sure you check out the tweet up in the nest if you want to get involved with the newsletter or the Telegram group. Got a lot of really good alpha going on in there. Make sure you head up to the nest and click on those links to get involved. I really appreciate everybody here. There's still over 2,300 people in the house. So make sure everyone out there, make sure you give some love to the speakers that uh, contributed to this space and as well to Raf's project. Uh, the the name is Money Sign NFT. Uh, it's the Ape Pudgy Clone X Azuki Milady MF for Inu. I really like that name. And maybe I might even have it memorized by the end of the space. I'm not sure. But big shout out to Raph and your project. Every, everybody definitely go give Raph and his project some love. And with that being said, my name is AJ Rice Crypto. That was the roundtable. We'll catch you again tomorrow. Get rich or get wrecked. Have, a, have yourselves a great, safe rest of your day. Later. Keep an eye out for spaces every day, baby. Let's go. NFT, baby. Let's go.